This is the 50th Italian Grand Prix, the last of this year's European events and possibly the last for some time at the historic Monza circuit. For although last year's terrible tragedy has resulted in nearly half a million pounds being spent on improvements to Monza's three and a half mile lap, the Italian Grand Prix moves to Imola next year. But for this year, it's hopefully a much safer Monza into which has poured a record number of the most enthusiastic, knowledgeable and fiercely partisan spectators in the world. They want to see one thing, a Ferrari win. And it's a Ferrari, Jody Schechter's, that's leading the World Championship from Jacques Lafitte's Ligier, Alan Jones's Saudi Williams and Gilles Villeneuve's Ferrari. But Jones can't win the championship because the maximum points he can score is 40. But on the front row of the spread out starting grid, the fastest after practice are the two turbocharged Renaults of Frenchman Jean-Pierre Jabouy and René Arnoux. Row two, Schechter and Jones. Row three, Villeneuve and Regazzoni's Saudi Williams. 24 starters, 50 laps, 180 miles. As Jody Schechter gets into his Ferrari for his 97th Grand Prix, he leads the World Championship and he has finished in every race he started this year. Australian Alan Jones on top form. He's won the last three Grand Prix. He's trying for his fourth in a row in his 65th Grand Prix as he talks to Sterling Moss. Parisian Jean-Pierre Jabouy, the man who has done so much to develop the Renault. Winner of the French Grand Prix. Pole position at Monza, but using the spare car after crashing his number one Renault in practice. As the warm-up ends, watching the race with me is former world champion James Hunt. Well, Murray, it looks to me as if the two Renaults have used their power advantage to good effect on this power circuit at Monza, and uh, they should be well up in the race, obviously, as fast as practice qualifiers. But the other interesting point is that the French tyres, as, uh, as last year, seem to be very dominant, and this may be a serious problem for Lafitte uh, in order for him to make up ground against the, the Renaults and the Ferraris. It could well be, and we've got 50 laps to find out, starting very shortly now. And look at Schechter, punching through, and look at Alan Jones, left very badly at the start, as Jody Schechter blasts up to the Retificio chicane on lap one. Schechter leads, René Arnoux in the Renault in second position, Villeneuve, Lafitte, Regazzoni, Jabouy, and there going through Nicky Lauda and Bram Biller trapped in the Alfa Romeo as Kiki Rosberg gets away in the wolf. Looking down onto the circuit as they go up to the grand curve, take no numbers of the numbers in the top of your screen because they are camera positions. James Hunt, Jody Schechter leading. Prospects. Well, that was a real world champion type start from Jody Schechter. He looks to be really in form. And, uh, of course, he does have an advantage over the two Renaults being turbocharged. They have to get boost pressure up in order to get away. And uh, without being able to hold full throttle at the start, it's difficult for them to make good starts. But they've done pretty well, and the race will now settle. Arnu in the turbocharged Renault in second place. There's the leader. Arnu second, Villeneuve third, Lafitte fourth, and Jabwi coming up to take Clay Regazzoni and fifth position. And Jabwi is in fifth position with René Arnu leading in the other Renault as Nelson Piquet chases Clay Regazzoni down to the Parabolica in seventh position. Coming towards us now at 160 miles an hour down to this third gear bend where they go to 135 miles an hour, it's Schechter. Arnu in second position. And then Villeneuve, and if Schechter's leading at the end of the first lap, and he will be, the crowd will go mad. Look at them in the background, waving the flags, as René Arnoux goes through over the line in second position, and he's going to take Jody Schechter, or is he? He's using all of the 600 horsepower he's reputed to have under his foot, and he's got the inside line at the ready feature, and he's through. Arnoux leads, Schechter third, Villeneuve third, James Hunt. Well, that was a perfect demonstration of the power advantage that the Renault has with these turbocharged engines. They have their disadvantage in throttle lag with the corners, but get them on a good bit of straight like that, and they're past everybody, which makes them awfully difficult cars to race against at Monza, because they can overtake you, but you can't overtake them. René Arnoux then leading from the two Ferraris of Schechter, and somebody's lost it in the back very badly. Somebody has gone off the circuit and thumped the arm code very hard indeed. There is Nelson, as we look again, it's Regazzoni in the white car and Nelson Piquet in the Brabham Alfa Romeo at the Bragan Curve. And Regazzoni moves across to the left as we look in slow motion and 
there is Piquet, he's lost the Brabham Alfa Romeo altogether, he's slammed into the Armco as Arnu leads, sector second, and James Hunt, comment. Well, it's impossible to see exactly what happened from those pictures, Murray, but uh, in fact, the Curva Grande is a completely flat-out curve in a modern Formula One car. There was no need for Regazzoni to use all the road, although one does. It just depends on whether he saw Piquet, because Piquet was coming around the outside of him, trying to overtake, probably with justification, but if he wasn't far enough up and, far up enough and was on a blind spot, for Regazzoni, then of course uh, it was an ine inevitable thing. Well, at the end of lap two, that's Jochen Maas's arrows going slowly round the parabolica as he's passed by the leaders, and the leader this time is René Arnoux, chased by Schechter in the Ferrari, chased by Villeneuve in the Ferrari. There is Lafitte, and in fifth position, Jean-Pierre Jabouy, up to the Retificio, and, and, and that's half a motor car down there. The rear end of it, as we look down from the helicopter, and behind the trees and yet it's it's number six that's the front part that's the front part of Nelson Piquet's Brabham Alpha do you think James what's your comment well it looks to me as if as if he must be out and all right because the cockpit of the car isn't damaged it's uh, it must have been a huge shunt Murray to have broken the car in two like that it's a very rare occurrence but there are no ambulances and dramas the race has not been stopped apparently and so I would imagine that everybody got away okay and Look at that! That's Jacques Lafitte challenging for third position and coming right up alongside Gilles Villeneuve at the Retificio. Arnu through, Schechter through, Villeneuve is still in third position and Jacques Lafitte has had to drop back in fourth position. And we hear, thank heavens, that Nelson Piquet is perfectly all right after that dreadful looking accident in the Brabham Alfa Romeo. He was the only car involved, thank heavens for that too. So, Arnu, Schechter, Villeneuve, and the Frenchman who is only in his second full season of Grand Prix racing is driving like a mature veteran, leading the race, and Clay Regazzoni, in the second of the two Saudia Williams cars, is still running in sixth position. There is the fifth place man, Jean-Pierre Jabouy in the Renault. Down to the left-hander, and James, the four leaders. Well, it looks as if we're in for a very interesting race now, Murray. I think uh, the leading group don't seem to be splitting up at all, although Jabu is dropping back a little. Arnu may be holding up the Ferraris a little bit, but he'll be a major problem to pass because he's got so much power on the straights, he can just go at his own speed round the corners. Uh, the man, I think, to watch at the moment seems to be Lafitte. Jones, that's Alan Jones's car in the pits after that dreadful start of his. He's obviously had trouble getting away. He can't keep going. It's a question now of whether he'll come back into the race as on lap seven, Arnu has got Schechter right behind him, almost tucked under his rear wing as they go into the corner. Then Villeneuve, then Lafitte, then Jabouy, and that's how close it is between first, second, third, fourth, and fifth places. Two Renaults, two Ferraris, and the Ligier with the Ford Cosworth engine. And it's a turbocharged car, leading two flat 12 engine cars, leading a V8 and then another turbo. And there is young Rene Arnu down to the Parabolica, leading the race, and the three world championship leaders, Schechter, Lafitte and Villeneuve, are behind Rene Arnu in respectively second, fourth and third positions. This is the very, very fast part of the course, down to the Parabolica, and we are coming to the end of lap seven in this 50-lap Italian Grand Prix of 1979, the 50th Italian Grand Prix, James Hunt. Well, I like Lafitte's form at the moment. He's got to do something, uh, preferably win this race, if he's going to uh, stand any chance in the championship to balance the books a bit now. Uh, but he looks to be the only guy of the leading four to be pressing. He's getting very close to Villeneuve. He'll have a job passing him. But um, if, if the race settles, there's plenty of time to go. And if he can maintain that form, I would put my money on Lafitte at the moment. Retificio, lap eight, Arnu, Schechter, Villeneuve, Lafitte, first, second, third and fourth. Into the first right-hander at, at the crank curve there. Then up to the Roger Chicane. One of the chicanes has been put in to slow down this tremendously fast monster circuit where even so the lap record is still 132.1 miles an hour although it's taken a battering already.
No changes for the first five, but Jean-Pierre Jabouy there in the white and yellow. And there's midfield net, and somebody's nearly punted off the course there. And it looked as though it was one of the McLaren cars that hit him as the leaders come up to the chicane at Ascari. And more midfield men go through. There is Fittipaldi behind him, Kiki Rosberg, and look again, that's John Watson in the middle of the screen. Jean-Pierre Jabouy just going out of picture. Pironi on the left. And it's Watson hitting Pironi and lifts the rear of the El Tyrol, James Hunt. Well, that's, again, a very difficult situation to see, but it, I thought, looking at the picture, that Watson had done enough to get inside Pironi and at least have the right to go around the corner side by side. I thought Pironi shut the door heavily on him and may well have paid the price for it. Lap 13, Rene Arnu still leads. Schechter in the Ferrari in second position. Chasing... Arnu very hard indeed and Arnu is seeing Schechter of course all the time in his mirrors he cannot afford to put one wheel out of position because behind him is Schechter behind Schechter is Villeneuve and the fourth place man Jacques Lafitte in the Ligier is that close to Villeneuve in front of him first, second, third and fourth out of the Roger up to Lesmo Arnu looking as though he's got the race well under command but no, but no, Schechter through. Jody Schechter leads. Villeneuve passed Arnoux. Lafitte passed Arnoux. And Rene Arnoux, who one moment was fourth, it first is now fourth. What is your guess, James? Well, it looks as if he may have missed a gear. But no, he seems to be slowing down as well, Murray. I think he's in some sort of mechanical trouble. So either he'll make it to the pits or else he's out of the race. What a transformation. And now look at the Italian crowd because it is one of their beloved Ferraris as Rene Arnu slows down. It is one of their beloved Ferraris in the lead and another of them in second place. One, and Jacques Lafitte tries to take Villeneuve as they come up to the right-hander. And the crowd will now really get excited. You'll see those Ferrari flags wave. There they are in the background. As for the first time, there, there, Jody Schechter goes through. Then Villeneuve, Jody Schechter, who led in the early stages of the race, has regained the lead. And look at the way the car is bouncing on the suspension as it comes up to the Retificio. And if it was your position, James, how would you be running the race? Well, uh... Of course, it's different for each of the three drivers. We've got a perfect situation. The three leaders for the World Championship all, all battling it out for the lead with, if anything, Lafitte looking the man most in form at the moment of pressuring. Jody is in a happy position of having Villeneuve cushioning him from behind, although Villeneuve is no doubt fighting for his own place and his own championship chances. So they're all basically doing battle. Jody, of course, has the, holds the trump card at the moment, but it's a long way to go. So it could be Jody Schechter for world champion in 1970. And that's John Watson. John Watson, who was in ninth position, off the course. Is he going to get back on, J James? Uh, no, Murray, I've had a bit of practice in situations <laughs> like that, and you don't get out of that sand. No way. Well, on the side of the car, you can just see John what's wrong, is what the mechanics have painted. And there's Arnu, Renny Arnu, in the pits. He was in second position, clearly out of the race. The man who's had appalling luck in two races now, because he lost a wheel in Holland, and at half distance almost, Schechter, Villeneuve, Lafitte, fourth position, Jabwi, fifth, Clay Rigazzoni in the Saudi Williams, and Nicky Lauda in sixth position. Looking down onto the Retificio, and the battle is now very much for fourth position. And it's between these two, Jean-Pierre Jabwi in the turbocharged Renault, and closing up on him fast, veteran, 40 years old, Clay Rigazzoni, the second oldest man in the race, the oldest is Bram Biller, and Clay Regazzoni, the winner of the British Grand Prix, is chasing Jean-Pierre Jabouy, the winner of the French Grand Prix, for fourth position. And Jabouy is very unhappy about that motor car, I remind you, which is oversteering. It's his spare car, not the one he set up ideally for the race today. Jabouy then. Behind him, Regazzoni. Turbocharged Renault. The Saudi Williams. For fourth position, Keki Rosberg in the Wolf. He's one of the backmarkers. He only qualified in 23rd position. 
So, Rosberg away and down towards the Parabolica as Schechter and Villeneuve and Lafitte. First, second, and then Rick and Rigatoni through up to fourth position. James, what's your comment on that? Well, I was in fact going to comment on the leaders there, Murray, because it's interesting to note that Lafitte now, sadly, seems to be struggling to stay with the two Ferraris. I suspect he's in some sort of minor mechanical bother. Maybe the balance of his car's gone off, uh, uh, any little sort of thing. He seems to be dropping back, which is rather taking the sting out of this race, unfortunately. And number 35 there is in seventh position. It's the young Italian Bruno Giacomelli in the new Alfa Romeo V12. And coming towards us, number five, ex-double world champion Nicky Lauda in the Brabham Alfa has got young Giacomelli just behind him and Giacomelli is gaining all the time in this entirely new Bra Alfa Romeo with the V12 engine another lap completed Nicky Lauda sixth over the line Giacomelli seventh over the line down to the Reti Ficio Lauda and if Nicky Lauda finishes this race, it'll be the first one he's finished for virtually the whole season. There's Giacomelli, and you can see that he is catching the sixth-place man, Nicky Lauda, in front of him. That's how close it is. And that on the left is Brand Villa and Schechter leading the race, is coming up to take the oldest man in the race. And it's Brand Villa's first race since he crashed disastrously at the beginning of last year's Italian Grand Prix. And now Schechter is through. There's Villeneuve coming from behind Bram Villa as Hans Stuck goes round the Parabolica in the ATS. The next car you see will be the leader, Jody Schechter. There he is, Villeneuve still right behind him in second position. And Jack Lafitte is definitely dropping back. Yes, I'm afraid so, Murray. I, I wouldn't care to hazard a guess at what his problem is. It's obviously minor, but it doesn't need much to take just that little bit of edge off. And I think the Ferraris are now asserting some dominance in the race, which of course is a situation that plays into their hands, means the pressure's gone off Jody. All he has to do now really is to concentrate on finishing. That's Giacomelli, that's Giacomelli. He's spun off, you can see the rear wheels ploughing into the sand. The man who was in seventh place and catching sixth place man Nicky Lauda and standing a chance of getting a world championship point is out of the Italian Grand Prix. Now, Giacomelli will undoubtedly, yes, goes right up to his ankles in sand as he plods across the Parabolica. Yes, well, that's been a great success, that sand. Over the, they've had that there for some years. It's a large runoff area, and it stops the cars fantastically quickly, and I really, really think that the safety people in motor racing should give some thought to uh, using that as much as possible in other places, because you come down there very fast, and uh, it stops the car really quickly. And now the two Ferraris, Schechter with Villeneuve, are clear of Jacques Lafitte in third position. And they're giving us a motor racing demonstration of the type that we saw so many times last year. Only then it was Mario Andretti and Ronnie Peterson in the two Lotus 79s. And that's Clay Rickardson. Jones! Alan Jones it is. Alan Jones is back in the race. After electrical problems, he's more than two laps behind Nicky Lauda, but he's caught him, he's going to pass him, he's broken the lap record, 1 minute 36.3. He is the fastest man on the course at Monza at the moment, and he is ploughing through the field. He won in Germany, in Austria, in Holland. He can't catch the leaders, of course, and that's, that's Lafitte's car, that's the man who was in third position, and with no Lafitte in the cockpit, that means to say that if Jody Schechter there can win this race, and he is now on the 49th lap out of 50, he has to be the 1979 world champion. Because Jacques Lafitte will not catch him, and Gilles Villeneuve will hold the second position to team orders. And Regazzoni is now up into third position because Jean-Pierre Jabouille is out of the race with an oil leak. So, both the Renaults out, and Jody Schechter comes down to the Parabolica for the 49th time out of 50. In his wheel track, Gilles Villeneuve, the white car behind them, is in third position. It's Clay Rigazzoni, and he has got the gap down from over seven and a half seconds to just under four seconds. They are now starting the last lap. Well, Mario... Unless uh, we get a last-minute drama, Jody Schechter's world champion for 1979. As I said, it's, uh, it's not been a great year, but it's, uh, it's been 
uh, a reward for thorough hard work by Jody and a long, a long career at the top. He's been knocking on the door. He very nearly won the championship in his first full season in 1974, which was a fantastic attempt. He's driven very steadily. He's taken uh, advantage of other people's mistakes. Other drivers have had their chances, particularly Villeneuve this year. He's uh, been a bit over exuberant and uh, Jody has kept ploughing steadily on, picked up the points. Ferrari reliability has been 100% for him, which is a fantastic achievement. And uh, I think he thoroughly deserves it. He'll be a worthy world champion. What a magnificent day for the gigantic Italian crowd. A win for Ferrari, for Schechter. Second place for Ferrari, for Villeneuve. And in third position, if he keeps it up, Clay Regazzoni, ex-Ferrari team man who has himself won the Italian Grand Prix, now in third position in the Saudi Williams, and there he is. Into the Violoni for the last time. Into Ascari for the last time. Accelerate up through the gears from fourth to fifth to 160 miles an hour. Into the Parabolica for the last time. Regazzoni getting closer and closer, but not close enough. The crowd roars, and well they might, because this is the last corner of the 50th Italian Grand Prix, and it's the corner and the straight that is going to make Jody Schechter world champion of 1979 as he wins the Italian Grand Prix. Villeneuve second, and in third place in the Saudi Williams, Clay Regazzoni. A wonderful race. There is the 1979 world champion, Jody Schechter. And up into second place in the world championship goes Gilles Villeneuve. Ferrari's first and second. In third position, Regazzoni. Fourth, Nicky Lauda. He finished fifth, Mario Andretti back in the points. And sixth, Jean-Pierre Gerrier in the candy tour. So, Jody Schechter tonight celebrates his first world championship. Here's how the points stand. And with two races left, Jody can't be caught. Barry Gill talked to Schechter in Monza tonight. Jody, congratulations. How does it feel to be world champion? I don't think I really realise at the moment how it feels. I think um, when I wake up tomorrow, I'm going to realise that what's happening in the next day. But at the moment, it hasn't really hit me. <laughs> Jody, it's been a most dramatic race. It began with our new leading. And then, of course, a tremendous challenge by Jack Lafitte, who was in third, which would have stopped you becoming champion. Can you describe the race to us in your own words? Well, I got a good start. Uh, the Renault in front of me stalled. Uh, they have a problem with the turbo starting. And I uh, got past that, got a good start. And then Anu passed me on the first straight, because they, their speed on the straight is very, very fast. And then, really, I just had to stay with him. I was using his toe. Uh, my engine was getting a little bit hot, but I, I could see the, the dreaded Lafitte coming up there. I didn't quite believe it, but he was there, and he was pushing um, um, Jill very hard. I could see that, and I, I was a bit worried at that stage. And, and then I think he had a little problem with his brakes, he was telling me. And he started dropping back, which was relieving. Well, he dropped out at the end of lap 41, so nine laps to go, knowing that if you stayed in the lead, you were world champion. What were you thinking at that time? Well, they gave me a sign and left it out, so uh, that, that was a relief. But really, uh, I, I didn't want to think of the world championship or anything, because I, I knew that I could still make a mistake and before the end of the race. You've had an enormous reception from the crowd here. What are you going to do to celebrate? Work, I think. I think being a world championship is a lot of work, but uh, I'm going to go and have dinner with the mechanics because I think they've obviously been the big, big part of it.